Yeah, so following on from my Grant's Orange video, there's a few guys asked if I could do a version of my Oyster Catcher. Um, so I'm going to tie that today on a tube. Uh, the Oyster Catcher is a fly that I tied back in 2011. And really what I was wanting to do was bring in the qualities from flies like um, Collie Dogs and uh, Sunny Shadows, Monkeys, that have something that we could fish in coloured water or in low light conditions. Um, so I looked at flies that had worked well in those conditions and a lot of them had hot orange or white predominantly in, in the dressings. So really it's putting those two ideas together, but also softening the fly up and making something that was more typical of the flies that we fish on the spay. So I'll show you how to tie the oyster catcher. Now today I'm going to dress it on an inch copper tube. Um, I will tie them on probably as small as three quarter inch and up to about an inch and a quarter. But um, Typically it's a fly that would fish in high water, so I want a fairly large heavy tube. We'll just start off with a layer of uh, black fly tying thread. So this is just a 6 o today. Now I deliberately left a bit of a gap here and I'm just going to use that for the orange silicon tubing that we'll use to hold the hook later. So for the tail of the fly, it's in two sections, and the lower section is uh, just some orange bucktail. And lengthwise, you want that just about half a length uh, beyond the end of the tube. Now we don't need to put too much pressure on the on that at the moment as we're going to put in another section just above that which is white bucktail. And again just a similar amount. Now don't bother with the body on the oyster catcher, um, what I tend to do here is just work a layer of fly tying thread, um, just covering any of the colour there. And rather than a rib, what I tend to do is just take a small amount of Loctite super glue here, and just work that into the threads. Now in the middle of the fly here, I'm just going to put on a large uh, cock hackle in black. Now this hackle is designed to support the long wing which we're going to put on the fly. So you want it to be fairly bushy as it's going to hold up the wing. So we'll just draw that back now. Now we'll just build up a little layer of uh, fly tying thread in front of that. And at this point we're just going to put on an underwing. Now for this I use black bucktail. But I tend to use the kind of stiff brittle bucktail towards the base of the tail for this. It's quite dense and it, it's um, it just it works well just to support the lighter wing that's going to go above. Now lengthwise you want it about two thirds of the way into the tail. And it's quite springy stuff this, so just do a couple of light turns over to start with. And then just tighten as you go forward. And we'll just trim off any of the front ends here. Once that's trimmed up, you can just tie over. Just build up a bit of a base for the 
the top wing now. Now for the longer wing you can use various materials, I don't think it's hugely important. Um, goat hair is very good, um, if you can get bucktail that's long enough that's excellent. Some of the synthetic materials are good nowadays as well. But I recently acquired some excellent black bear um, which I'm going to use today. So lengthwise uh, you want that just uh, beyond the, the tail, maybe a sort of quarter of the length again of beyond the tails. And again we're not looking for a huge amount, we want this fly to be streamlined into fish. Uh, if you tie too much uh, uh, it tends you tend to get problems casting with a large fly like this and uh, you don't get the fly to swim well either. So we'll just work that into place. Being a spay fly, we want it to be fairly flat the wing. We're, we're, we're not looking for the, the big ridge that you'll have on some of the Scandinavian flies, for example. Now once the fly is complete, it's a fairly obvious pattern with a very bright colour, so we don't need a huge amount of flash or any materials in it. I like to just put in a couple of strands of mirror flash in the wing here. It's a nice topping. So we'll just draw that into the wing, making sure it's the right length before trimming off. And we'll notice we've left quite a large uh, gap at the front here, because I'm now going to put on a large hackle in white. Um, this is a, a slapping hackle or something similar. Um, Really what you're looking for is length. I mean, you can use a hen hackle or a cock hackle, but you want something fairly soft with a, a good length. So as you bring it around, just tie the thread through it. This will just help to open up the fibers. It'll give you a more even distribution. And you don't want to overdress it, so once you're happy that you have a, an, an even distribution around the, the tube, then you can uh, tie it off. And we'll just trim that back out. And just take a bit of time here just to make sure the feathers are even. Now we'll just take our thread and Dog it over. Now this fly is going to have a large head, so we're actually using the slope of the hackle to produce that for us. It being a high water fly, I, I tend to put a, a large bright red head on it, and uh, we'll just build that up with the thread just now. At this point, I like to put on a couple of large jungle cock eyes. And you want to take a pair of the same size if you can do that. Just stripping off some of the lower feathers so it ties in better. When you put the second one in, just put maybe one or two turns and then just make sure that they're lined up before tying in tightly. Now to finish the fly, I just use some number four glow bright thread. I'll just trim off the fly tying thread there. And this glow bright as well. And 
And to finish off, we just use a quick finish. I just use a piece of backing which has been folded here. And I'll just tie that in. Break off a glow bright and put that through the loop that you've formed. Then we'll just draw the, root, the loop through, locking the glow bright underneath. Now at this point, I'll just put on a piece of orange silicon tubing, just for holding the hook. Again, it's, it's a good trigger point at the back of the fly as well there. Shows up well in the water. And just draw all the materials together before finishing with some Loctite super glue on the head. Yeah, so that's the oyster catcher. An excellent fly for high water or low light conditions. Thanks.